So we're looking to take a quick walkthrough of the Talk to Your Data ChatGPT Snowflake DBT demo. What we want to do is we're we're basically looking at the Tasty Byte data from Snowflake and asking ChatGPT to generate some, you know, SQL queries, summarize the results and generate a graph for us to, you know, denote, you know, here's the data, here's an easier way for maybe non-SQL users or, you know, data analysts who you know don't want to write SQL all the time. This is kind of a proof of concept behind that to, to show what can be done. So in this case, what we have made available so far is we've loaded uh, the Tasty Bytes database with all of the different fields that exist where customer loyalty, order detail, order header, uh, the trucks, the menu items, locations, so on and so forth. And what we've ended up doing in uh, chat GPT, it doesn't understand any of that. It needs to know what those tables are, what those column means, what relationship exists. DBT is a great way to fill that gap where we have all of our, you know, this is the exact same thing that you would create as a model um, for a particular set of schema or something like that, that has a list out of all of your models. In this case, we just changed model to table. And then going through, we have the name of the table, the description of the table, all of the fields, their descriptions, what tests happen with um, that to, to note whether it's not unique or it is unique. Um, it also has different relationships between those tables telling us that, you know, location ID ties back to the location table on location ID. Um, all of those different things are built in here. And what we end up doing is passing this through to ChatGPT to give it context. So as we take a look at you know, this entire process, we want to ask a question here. And in this case, we're gonna start with you know, something that's like, what is the breakdown of sales by month for uh, 2020? Is a good data set that we have for here. Uh, we are going to graph the results. So that is telling ChatGPT to generate code to actually display that graph for us. So as we hit, you know, ask question, what chat, what we're doing in the background here of this Python application is going through and saying, all right, let's go, you know, here is our question, you know, in the console here, we can now put some debug information to see where we are, what we're doing, what needs to be done here. We generate, you know, this is the SQL that gets generated here. Um, and then it also tells us, you know, how many tokens we have available or that we've used there. So that way we can worry about things like rate limiting, managing costs, because you do get charged in different ways, depending on the model. So as it goes through, we see, okay, it executed the SQL, the SQL results were returned. So in that case, we took that SQL command that ChatGPT generated, ran it against our SQL database and tables, and then return the results. In this case, we are returning those in a pandas data frame just to make things a little easier for us. After that, we then send those results to ChatGPT to summarize it and give us a text response back. And here again, we're seeing how many tokens we used. And then as we're sending that to ChatGPT to say, hey, can you create a graph for, or create the code for a graph for this? We do run into this rate limiting issue. Um, what ends up happening here, and this is actually a great example though of what you should do, is we end up retrying this in the event that you hit a rate limit or some sort of error. We end up retrying that code just to say, hey, yep, you ran into a rate limit issue, therefore let's wait a set amount of time. Uh, you can have that with exponential back off, whatever it may be. But then we end up getting this result that says, hey, it took 650 tokens to run that through. So let's take a quick peek at what we have now with that done. Here we have our query results showing that table where we have you know, all 12 months worth of data in this table. In our summary, we have a text breakout, which you know shows the sales by month, you know, formatted a little nicer in a bucket in a bolded list. And then it goes through to say, yeah, there's a notable increase in sales during the summer months, followed by a slight dip in September before a significant increase in November. And then December, there's a slight decrease. Uh, this trend may be due to seasonal factors or external factors such as, you know, changes to customer behavior due to COVID-19 pandemic. All of that then shows, you know, a nice total sales by month with a nice chart here. Again, Streamlit allows you to, you know, view that in a bigger view. 
But overall, that's kind of what this is looking to do. You can ask it any type of question. It'll do some retries in the event that the SQL generates from the first attempt isn't particularly good and it fails. It'll actually give that feedback to ChatGPT with the error message to say, hey, recreate this query. And then it'll run through it again and then recreate this entire process. So overall, that is the demo with a breakdown of how this would work. And that is it.